Hello people, it's Martin here. Um, yeah, I did change my name, just in case you didn't um, notice. <laughs> so, yeah, this is going to be the first vinyl update finds video for... I have no idea how long. I mean, loads of people have done really amazing videos like diversifying, showing different stuff and playing records and and just being creative generally um i suppose years and years ago i only ever used to do vinyl finds anyway so i have to try and um up me ante a bit anyway i got my cup of tea it's bank holiday monday here cheers mm. god that is hot um yeah so without further ado let's just crack on with some finds most of them are a quid actually a couple a couple of them weren't um yeah, charity shops. I did go to a car boot, but it was the afternoon and everything had gone and <clears throat> nothing to see really by the time I got there. Yeah, I don't, I, I don't know what it is about car boots. I'm not so keen on them. I mean, no, no. I mean, charity shops, yeah, the money does go to charity. So I suppose that's a, that's a good thing. Yeah. Um, oh, the answer from my last video... Um, when I was sitting at that on the road kind of thing uh, with the road sign behind me it was from a John Otway album um, I forget what it's called now but you can look it up um, yeah John Otway local hero around here um, yeah right we'll start with some sevens loads of people have been showing sevens lately in fact i was thinking of doing a thread on it actually um but the other day i went into a charity shop and it was the world's worst selection of 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 um records i think i'd ever seen until lo and behold this turned up pretty good nick i guess um just the label jumped out as well so it's a stacks seven inch of sam and dave I think this is UK. It was a bit difficult to tell. Um, yeah, well, it's got Polydor Records on it, 1966. So, yeah, it's got Made in Great Britain on it, so it must be, yeah. And then a couple of other ones that were um, 50p. Lulu, I like that, the man so, who sold the world. I uh, don't know the B-side. Ah, <laughs> this is a bit of an upgrade for me. I always used to like this single. This was a sort of like a Cajun single, wasn't it? Um my toot toot. It's about 86, I think, or something. 85. Yeah. Uh, Dave Brubeck, take five, and Brew, Blue Rondo a la Turk. Theme uh, from Shaft. That B side. And, uh, ah, now this Black is Black, Lost Bravas. I'd never, I'm presuming that these were the people that did the original of the song, which was like a disco kind of record whoever did that now i can't remember um a pit a, a peak miss a peak or something was it i can't remember anyway yeah i'm guessing this is like sort of a bit more garage pop or something i'm not sure but um yeah got these specially imported stickers on them 5p and it's got the original sleeve i suppose so that's quite nice so yeah i think i'm going to go back and do I'm going to do some other videos and stuff and yeah anyway onto the albums that's five minutes in already and um yeah i have to try and whiz through this somebody had stuck some stickers on here but he gave them all to me for a for a quid because he knows me um it's sort of like a thrift shop i suppose I, I, difficult to describe what it is really sort of sec like that sort of old-fashioned traditional sort of um Junk shop, I suppose you would say. Yeah. Hmm. Anyway, Duran Duran, Notorious. So this was after they'd done um, A View to a Kill, and this was um, 86. So maybe this was uh, breaking out from their real teen pop sensibilities and growing up album, or at least I think it is, as if I know what I'm talking about. But, um, yeah, Duran Duran. 
So, out of the way. Ah, I don't really know who Judge Dredd is, but I'm going to give that a go. He's sort of, I hope he's not like cod reggae sort of thing, but I can see it's definitely humoristic sort of sounding by the song titles. Yeah. Don't know. Don't know. Uh, double Barry White with Love Unlimited Orchestra. Yet to sort of get into the Love Unlimited thing generally um but i'll give it a go yeah <laughs> cheesy picture on the cover <laughs> adam and the ants now i do remember adam and the ants from that sort of time i would have been at a little school primary school um so i remember the hits but that's it i have to say it's quite an ugly looking band there <clears throat> yeah Oh, that would make quite a nice pair of curtains. So, yeah, I think I'll give Adam and the Ants a go. There is actually some records down there which I'm going to take to um, um, record fairs. Yeah, because they'll be starting again soon. So I'll show you, but sort of some stuff down there that I've sort of like sorted out. And I don't need that Kate Bush um, best of um, album. Uh, Small Faces, Big Hits, just a compilation on Virgin. Um, yeah, interestingly, the guy had priced it at £35. Yeah, bless him. Yeah, but for a quid, you know, I haven't got anything on Small Faces at all, so can't complain really. No. Uh, I think I maybe had this once. going to keep this. Finn Lizzie, Live and Dangerous, when he gives his f famous um, Is There Any Irish Girls Out There sort of um, patter. And we've got, uh, oh yeah, the um, Motown Chart Busters 6 with a sort of a spaceship on it with 2008 on the back. Really good nick, that. Usually they're a bit like bashed. I'm prepared. Recently I had this thing about if you watch my videos about Prefab Sprout and um, Steve McQueen, I have come actually to like it. I would have to say I've come to to I've, it's grown on me. I've listened to it when I was doing washing up quite a lot. <laughs> I know that sounds strange. And another album I actually listened to um, while doing the washing up, which I don't know whether I'm not really a midlife crisis exactly, but Eagles Hotel California, and it's I'm listening to some Eagles as well. I mean. Yeah. It's very much if you grew grow grew grow up in America, I'm sure. And probably if you're not white middle class or whatever, you must be so sick of hearing this sort of stuff on all those radio stations and and whatever and um well I didn't grow up with them at all. In fact, when I worked in um record shop I barely would have gone anywhere near the Eagles but I don't know I suppose some of the issues they sing about are yeah quite interesting aren't they you know um yeah so I'm gonna I think I'm gonna do an album not really a response album but I'm gonna do a um video that will be something about um music I've previously considered for um boring square people <laughs> yeah uh yeah so another person as i was saying prefab sprout and don't really like elvis costello but i found this for a quid and um i know it's got oliver's army on it and um it's a shame it hasn't got secret lemonade drinker on it though but um never mind uh some of these albums i didn't pick up unfortunately they have um barry smith written on them and um there as well <clears throat> so this is um tv i think series kung fu yeah but i can't do anything about that but i'll just go with it you know good old barry smith thank you to him divine so this is my usual selection of random things giving them a go um yeah oh this one came with a poster <laughs> 
Oh dear. I mean, not not. I don't watch it, but um, I don't think he'd be winning RuPaul RuPaul Drag Queen, would he? To be fair, I don't know. <laughs> uh, next one, even more obscure from the from the eighties. This was a French series I remember on Channel Four. My mum watched it. I don't know, might give this to her for her birthday. No, that would be really cruel. Um, so this is called Chateau Chateau Vallon, and it's composed by a guy called um, Vladimir. What's his name? Oh, I can't find his name now. Vladimir Cosma. Is that him? Maybe. Yeah, music composed by yeah. I suppose this is a little bit like um, French version of, um, you know, period drama. Yeah. Downton Abbey, French style. Yeah, sort of some keyboardy music and incidental music. Thought might be interesting for a quid. Uh, this I've got because I played it the other day. And my copy got through most of side two and then it started. It, it got stuck. So we'll try again with that one, I think. Yes. Uh, oh, yeah, another music for squares here. Hello, I must be boring, Bill Collins. Give that a go. Uh, well, this, I don't know who this guy is at all. American. Comedian, social commentator, not sure really. Might try and sample it a bit, it's quite interesting. Sounds on the back. Up to 12 minutes already, I'm going on. Uh, Junior Walker and the All Stars Road, Road Runner for a quid on Tamar Motown. Mm. Ah, okay. This is on Suprafon, which I think is Czech or Hungarian label. This is a double uh, mid seventies Czechoslovakia, yeah, and it's got some writing in um, Cyrillic Russian there as well. So I'm not quite sure, but just it says jazz inspired piano compositions. Worth a go, worth a go. I thought Aaron Copeland, um, some people I've never heard of. Um, Erwin, oh, there's a tiny spider there. I'll just flick him away, I won't kill on screen. Uh, Erwin Schulhoff, uh, Bohuslav Martinu, I've heard of him, I think he's like Romanian or something. Um, Emil Frantisek Burian, don't know. Eric Satie, Claude Debussy, George Gershwin, Paul Hindemith, Paul Hindemith. yeah. Well, for a quid, can't complain. And then this very, I mean, I think Alan Static Traveller, I was talking about this with him. Uh, this is a Polish um, um, pressing of uh, Penderecki. And this, I think, is um, to do with the Holocaust. Of course, a lot of it happened in, in what is now Poland again. So... Yeah, I'm not expecting this to be a very easy listen, to be honest with you. But I thought I would like to hear it anyway, having never been to Auschwitz or um, been to Poland, but not Auschwitz. Um, yeah, the Bell Tower expiration day. This was a quid. Uh, and um, these, sorry, these next four, sorry, the last... Four, four, I think. Yeah, well, from actually from a proper record shop. Um, yeah, this is um, is it somebody Lawrence Bickers or somebody or Terry Terry Bickers? Yeah, I think he was in quite a few indie sort of bands. I don't know that this is so much shoegaze. Um, it's more that sort of indie rock of the period. When is it from ninety one ish? I think yeah. And another one from ninety one. I picked out of loads of twelve inches. They were shifting. I could have taken a few others. This is Perfecto Mix of Your Town, Deacon Blue, which I seem to remember was pretty good. And then the two records were not um, were not um, a quid. Okay, so I spent seven quid on a mint copy of Miranda Sex Garden. If you remember, a 
few months ago I got another one of their albums online which is a lot more um um guitar based whereas this is um what's that 20 25 short songs so they're sort of like medieval kind of renaissance um a cappella songs i think or at least i think they are yeah i mean i remember they had a they released gush forth my tears this is from um it's on mute and it's on it's uh, 1991 sorry yeah and lastly um, I've got loads of Vangelis um, albums, um, often cheap, cheerful to, to pick up. Obviously just shown the uh, very well-known um, Chariots of Fire. This one I've not seen before. It's on uh, Deutsche Grammophon. It's going to be abstract, isn't it? And, and avant-garde, I think. There's three tracks on it. It's 1985 and uh, Invisible Connections, Atom Blaster and Fermo Vision. So... That's my finds. Um, I might be back soon. So, um, yeah. Thanks for watching. Until the next time. Bye.